Hi guys, uh, greetings from placement scheme. Now uh, in this lecture series, I'll be continuing the uh, TCS previous year questions. Um, in, the, in the previous four lectures, I've solved uh, TCS NQT test conducted on 24th October and it was slot one. Okay, now I'm, uh, I'll be continuing with the slot two based questions. Yeah. So if you have not watched the slot one based questions, on quantitative ability, I would uh, recommend you guys to watch the videos on the YouTube channel of placement scale. Yeah. Let's start with this. What is the fourth proportional of 0 0.006, uh, 1.2 and 6 by 25? Now first we need to know what is fourth proportional. Okay. Let me give an example. The fourth proportional of A, B, C is a value. So let's say this is the fourth proportional. This value D is a fourth proportional. What does it mean? It means the ratio A by B will be equal to C by D. Is that clear? So the fourth proportional is a value such that the ratio of A by B will be equal to the ratio of C by D. So here in the same example, we have 0 0.006 and then we have 1.2 and then we have 6 by 25, right? So what is fourth proportional to, to this? Fourth proportional to this is a value X such that 0 0.006 divided by 1.2 is equal to 6 by 25 divided by x isn't it that's what we have seen right a by b should be equal to c by d now since we have uh, decimals here so let's convert this into perfect integers so since we have three decimal three uh, integers after the decimal point i'm multiplying by thousand and i'm also dividing this by thousand yeah because you can't change a number as such yeah now let's see what happens. 1000 into 0 0.006 is what? It is 6 by 1.2 into 1000 is 1200 is equal to 6 by 25x. Now what happens? 6, 6 cancel. So you get 25x is equal to 1200. 12 into 100. Okay. 25x is equal to 1200. So what happens? Now x is equal to 25 ones, 25 fourths. So you get the value of x as 48. Therefore, if the value of x is 48, then this condition satisfies. What is the condition? 0 0.006 by 1.2 will be equal to 6 by 25 divided by this value. Yeah, so that is called fourth proportional. Let's move to the next question. The present ages of three brothers are in the proportion 12 is to 14 is to 17. Okay, 12 is to 14 is to 17. So what will be their ages? Let's say the ratio constant is x. Okay, the ages will be 12x, 14x and 17x. Yeah. Now clearly when we look at this, you know, like this guy, he is supposed to be the youngest and he is supposed to be the eldest. Yeah, he is supposed to be the youngest. Yeah, for the same value of x, okay, this value will be lesser, right? So youngest and he is supposed to be the eldest and he'll be the elder one. Yeah, elder. Okay, now let's read the question. The difference between the ages of the elder and the eldest. Elder and eldest. So this is the elder guy and then this is the eldest guy. Yeah. So they are saying that the difference is 6. So what is that? 17x minus 14x is 3x. So 3x is equal to 6. So you get the value of x as 2. Okay, once you get the value of x, the ratio constant, you get the ages, right? So what is it? 12 into x. So what is the age of the youngest guy? It's 12x, that is 24. And then that is 14 into 2, 14x, that is 28. And then 17 into 2, that is 34. Okay. Now we've got the actual ages, the current ages. What will be the proportion of their ages after 4 years? So after 4 years, each of their ages increases by 4. Yeah, plus 4. This also plus 4. And this also plus 4. So what do we get? 24 plus 4 is 28. 28 plus 4 is 32. And 34 plus 4 is 38. So this will be the their ages after 4 years. Now we are supposed to find the proportion of their ages. So what is the proportion? So what can we divide? We can only divide this by 2, right? So what do we get? We get it as, okay, let me write it first. So 28 is to 38 is to 38. So this is the proportion. Yeah, let's convert into simplest ratio. Yeah, so 2 14 is 28, 2 19, sorry, it is 32 right here. I'm sorry, 32, yeah. So 2 14 is 28, 2 16 is 32 and 2 19 is 38. So what will be the proportion of their ages after 4 years? It is 14 is to 16 is to 19. That is option A. Let's move on to the next question. Two ants of length 1 cm and 1.2 cm crawl in opposite directions with average speed so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Now how many seconds will they take to cross each other? 
yeah so this is how the ant is okay pardon me for the representation of an ant here yeah so this is the ant the first ant and its length is one centimeter and then there is one more ant which is of length 1.2 centimeters and these two are crawling in opposite direction here yeah? now their average speeds are also given okay now how many seconds will they take to cross each other you know this this is an equivalent of a train question okay so we we know right like let's say there is a train of length l1 and there is a train of length l2 and then you know they're traveling in like what let's say this is traveling at uh, you know s1 meter per second and then this train is traveling at s2 meter per second in opposite direction right so after how much time will the trains cross each other completely so what do we do for that we'll just take it as l1 plus l2 the, the sum of their lengths divided by here it is s1 plus s2 the because the relative speed when they're traveling in opposite direction is addition of the speeds i hope you guys know this relative speed when traveling in opposite direction is the sum the relative speed when traveling in the same direction will be subtraction yeah so this this question is equivalent of the trained question yeah similarly so the same thing here so this ant is traveling at like what 2 mm per second and then this ant is traveling at 3 mm per second so the same thing so what do we do now so how do we calculate the time after which uh, the time that they take to cross each other so it is like what the sum of their lengths 1 plus 1.2 2.2 centimeters so 2.2 centimeters divided by you know right what is the formula that we have time is equal to the you know yeah l1 plus l2 divided by the relative speed it is the addition of the speeds relative speed yeah so i'm using the same formula so the time is equal to l1 plus l2 so 1 plus 1.2 is 2.2 divided by the relative speed 2 plus 3 that is 5 mm by second 5 mm per second yeah, so let's convert this centimeter into millimeter because we have the unit in millimeter right so we know one centimeter is 10 millimeters so 2.2 centimeter is like what it is 22 millimeters just multiply by 10 yeah you add by 5 mm per second it goes to the numerator so what happens now we get 22 by 5 so 5 4 20 again 5 4 20 so what is it so the two ants take 4.4 seconds to to cross each other completely so it is option a so please uh, take it as an equivalent of a train based question here yeah? two trains when traveling in opposite direction take so much time to cross each other completely is it clear let's move on to the next question the index numbers of five commodities okay these are the five commodities okay 121 123 125 so on and the weights assigned to these are respectively okay so these are the respective weights what is the weighted average so what do you mean by weighted average how do we calculate this see for this question how do we calculate weighted average yeah so we'll just multiply 121 with 5 and then 123 with 11 yeah okay let me write it for you yeah let me write it for you so what is weighted average so we'll just multiply this okay so 121 into the weight allocated that is 5 plus 123 okay 123 into the respective weight allocated 11 plus 125 into the respective weight allocated that is 10 plus 126 into the respective weight allocated that is 8 plus 128 into the respective weight allocated 6 divided by so what you understood right so first we'll have to multiply the the weights with their respective uh, weights assigned yeah so this is the five these are the five commodities and we are multiplying each of them with the respective weight allocated yeah weight assigned yeah divided by now finally we'll have to add all of this yeah so it is 5 plus 11 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 is that clear so just compute this you know that the tcs nqt it has an on-screen calculator you can take the liberty of using it for uh, computing this to get the answer okay so on, on simplifying you know you probably get the answer as like what 124.6 i guess yeah so you can use this okay i hope this concept is clear what do you mean by weighted average so just multiply the value with the the corresponding weight assigned okay for each of the values okay we have done that and then finally you'll have to divide by the sum of the total uh, weights assigned this is the sum of total weights assigned so we you know divide it and you'll get the answer yeah okay i'll probably give you one more method please uh, see if, if it makes sense to you yeah see this is what we are supposed to compute right so see 
we, we are supposed to add all of you're supposed to add and multiply all of this three yes so now if not this what i'll do is that rather than because it, it in, involves some calculation let's say you don't have a calculator let's say not for tcs for some other uh, you know exam how do we compute this okay so what i'll probably do is i'll convert everything in terms of 125 first because we have a 125 here right i'm taking the middlemost one yeah the middlemost observation is 125 right so what i'll do i'll convert everything in terms of 125 okay so let's see what happens i'm just you know dividing this i'm just erasing this see for this computation i'm just trying to compute this okay so what do we do so i'll convert everything in terms of 125 so let's see what happens so you get 125 into 5 okay and then this also i, I know like we are we, we we can't assume things here so we'll have to compensate for the assumption that we are making okay so i'll do it okay i'm trying to convert everything in terms of 125 okay this also 125 into 8 this also 125 into 6 you got it right I, I have left this values as such okay but i've converted the the first values as 125 now see here can we assume values as such no we can't change values so what extra have i taken here it's supposed to be 121 into 5 i've made it 125 into 5 so i've added 4 into 5 yeah so therefore to compensate for that i'll just make it minus 4 into 5 i hope you're clear with this 121 i'm making 125 so i've added 4 yeah so i'm subtracting 4 into 5 okay similarly here it is supposed to be 123 into 11 i have made it 125 into 11 so i have added 2 into 11 additionally so i am compensating for it i am just writing minus 2 into 11 and it's 125 into 10 125 into 10 so no compensation it's zero and it's 125 126 into 8 but i have just written as 125 into 8 so i have i'll have to add 1 into 8 extra yeah see, see, see. look at it very logically okay 126 i am writing it as 125 plus 1 into 8 okay so one that is what 125 into 8 plus 1 into 8 so i'm writing that 1 into 8 separately yeah so even here 128 into 6 right so i am writing 128 as 125 plus 3 okay into 6 so i'm writing 125 into 6 first then plus 3 into 6 next yeah so this is what effectively we are doing yeah we are trying to write everything in terms of 125 now let's see what happens so it's very simple now because see adding this is very easy because we have 125 common right so we have 125 common here so you can add all of this here yeah? if you take 125 common you have 5 plus 11 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 which you've already computed 5 plus 11 plus 10 plus 6 is what it is 40 yeah and then now we'll we'll just see the deviation so it is minus 20 okay let me also write that minus 20 minus 22 plus 8 plus 18 yeah plus 8 plus 18 so what do we get we have 18 plus 8 is 26 plus 26 minus 22 is plus 4 plus 4 minus 20 is minus 16 so we have got the value as what 125 into 40 minus 16 okay so this is the sum of observations so what we have done till now we have just computed the sum of observations and then you will have to divide by the weighted the sum of the weighted uh, the, the weights assigned right so 5 plus 11 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 if you remember the previous method yeah so this is what we did right and then you divided by 40 that's what we did right so here also have divided 40 so what do we get it is 125 into 40 by 40 so you get 125 minus you get 16 by 40 so what is it 8 twos 8 fives so 125 minus 0. 0.4 that is 124.6 that's the answer you get i hope this is clear uh, please don't take this question at face value okay as in for with respect to tcs and qt i strongly recommend to use the on screen calculator okay but i'm trying to give you one more method of assuming and then taking the deviations and then computing okay instead of doing 121 into 5 123 into 11 125 into 10 126 into 8 128 into 6 probably if you have four more observations like that 133 into something 145 into something yeah you can't really like uh, calculate it if you don't have calculators yeah you, you, if you if you calculate this now it takes a lot of time but rather what i'm doing i'm converting everything in, in terms of 125 so i'm writing 121 into 5 as see what am i writing it as i'm writing it as 125 minus 4 into 5 which is 125 into 5 minus 4 into 5 you got it right for everything i'll, I'll, I'll write it as such okay this also i'll write it as 125 minus 2 into 11 so first i'll write 125 into 11 then minus 2 into 11 so that's how we've written everything and just, now computing this is easy adding this is easy because we have 125 common 5 plus 11 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 is 40 
and then just computing these deviations are very very uh, small values here yeah? you can easily compute you've got this and then you've got minus 16 you divided by 40 you've got 125 minus 16 by 40 you've got 124.6 please remember this method okay this probably may be helpful for you know like some questions in some exam yeah just try to understand the concept okay which one of the following has the least value okay so now how shall we go about this you have root 75 minus root 74 you yeah you are definitely not expected to compute root 75 root 74 values and you know like compute the respective values and find and, and find the least yeah so there should be some uh, process of standardization here yeah so what shall we do so let me take the first one root 75 minus root 74 okay what shall we do we shall multiply this with root 75 plus root 74 okay the conjugate is what they call here root 75 minus root 74 you multiply with root 75 plus root 74 but you can't change a value as such so you'll have to also divide by root 75 plus root 74 so that effectively the value is not changing now let's see a minus b into a plus b what is it it's a square minus b square so a is root 75 a square minus b is root 74 so it is b square okay divided by you have root 75 plus root 74 i hope you got this a minus b into a plus b is a square minus b square okay so which is this so effectively what do we get root 75 whole square is 75 minus 74 yeah so you get 1 by root 75 plus root 74 so this is the value that you get is it clear so this value is equivalent of 1 by root 75 plus root 74 okay now logically you can also write the uh, you know the equivalent values of all of this here so uh, let me also prove it for one more uh, uh, you know value here so you have root 74 minus root 73 right so what shall what what are we what are we suggesting to do here we'll just take it as root 74 plus root 73 and then divide by root 74 plus root 73 so what happens again a minus b into a plus b you have a square minus b square so you get 74 minus 73 1 divided by root 74 plus root 73 i hope this is clear yeah i'm erasing this here i hope this is clear yeah we are doing the same thing again yeah therefore i'll, I'll just write the values as such now okay so root 74 minus root 73 will be what it will be 1 by root 74 plus root 73 okay that's what we have found right root 75 minus root 74 is equal to 1 by root 75 plus root 74 so this also i've written so what shall we do for this also what is this value it is 1 by root 77 plus root 76 this also 1 by root 76 plus root 75 now now see looking at this itself you can say which is the least of all think about it first try to compute which is the greatest value in the denominator okay see this is root 75 plus 74 it is 73 plus 74 it is 77 plus 76 75 plus 76 we definitely know that root 77 plus root 76 is the greatest of all therefore if you have a greatest value in the denominator then this value has to be the least of all yeah therefore what is the answer here root what is the equivalent of it this is the equivalent of it right so therefore this will be the least value of all let me repeat the final step okay so uh, what i'm saying is in the denominator this you you clearly know that the addition you know 77 plus 76 square root of that will definitely be the greatest of all because this, this is the greatest value that you, you have here yeah? the next greater one will be root 75 plus root 76 here yeah? now since this the denominator value is the greatest of all therefore the effective value the overall value will be like what the least of all because if you have a greatest value in the denominator then the overall value will be lesser right because you have one in the numerator therefore this is the least so the equivalent of this is root 77 minus root 76 so this is the least of all but now let me also give a shortcut see try to let let's look at it very intuitively okay see i am just taking the value root 1 root 2 root 3 root 4 yeah what is okay let me also write the values for you root 1 you know it's 1 and root 2 it's 1.414 i strongly suggest you guys to at least remember the values of root 2 and root 3 okay root 3 is 1.732 and then root 4 is 2 okay now let me let's look at what is root 2 minus root 1 what is root 2 minus root 1 okay it is 1.414 minus 4 which is 0 0.414 let's also look at what is root 3 minus root 
yeah root 3 minus root 2 so 1.732 minus uh, uh, 1 point okay let me compute that here 1.732 minus 1.414 so what do you get here you have 1 and then 3 so you get the value as 0 0.318 okay you get the value as 0 0.318 and then also subtract this 2 minus 1.732 2 minus 1.732 so what do we get? It's 1, it's 9, 9, 10. So it's 8, it's 6, it's what? 7, 2. So you get the value as 0 0.268. See, think about it. Clearly, as we go down, the difference between the square roots, yeah, it is decreasing. Just check it. See, initially between root 2 minus root 1, it was 0 0.414. When we when we have gone down to root 3 minus root 2, it has decreased further to 0 0.318 and then further to 0 0.268. So as we proceed further, yeah, the difference between the square roots of the conjugative numbers, it will be decreasing. Therefore, if you clearly observe, see here now what is happening. Let me write all these values in the, uh, in, you know, ascending order. Okay, so let me write what, what all do we have? We have root, it starts from 73, right? Okay, we have square root of 73, square root of 74, square root of 75, square root of 76, square root of 77. Yeah, I think that is it. Yeah, therefore, this difference if you take this, this difference and this difference, you know that this will definitely be lesser than this. You got it, right? That's what we have seen, right? Difference between root 4 and root 3 will be lesser than root 3 and root 2. Therefore, you can clearly say that root 7 minus root 76 will be the least of all. Because as we go further, if you want to take root 78 also, this root 78 minus root 77 will be even lesser than root 77 minus root 76 clearly try to remember this okay as we go down further okay the difference between the square roots of the conjugative values keep decreasing see if you if you're probably taking root 100 and root 99 the value will be very very less and if you take root 1000 minus root 999 even more lesser yeah so the values will be very the difference in the values will be very very less therefore clearly root 77 minus root 76 will be the winner because it is the least of all I hope this concept is clear. Yeah. This is one more way of looking at the same question. Okay, This is a conventional way, but do we have to do this every time? Not really. You can remember this concept and you can probably apply it elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. A retailer purchased 25 identical toys for a price of rupees P. Okay. So 25 toys. So I'll say cost price of 25 toys is equal to rupees P. So what is cost price of each toy? of one toy it is p by 25 yeah p by 25 rupees and he sold some of them for rupees p so there were 25 toys he sold only some of them let's say he sold x toys so i'll say sp of x toys is equal to rupees p i hope you're getting it there were 25 toys okay but he is not selling the entire 25 toys he's selling only a few of them so i've assumed that some some of them to be x so he effectively have sold x toys so sp of x toys is p okay remember this now if if the selling price of x toys is p what is the cost price of x toys you know cost price of one toy is p by 25 so what is cost price of x toys it is what one toy p by 25 x toys it is p into x by 25 yeah p by 25 into x okay now we have got the selling cost price of the x toys and then you have got the selling price of x toys now what are we supposed to find we are supposed to find the yeah the profit percentage is given yeah and then we are okay profit percentage and how is it calculated it is calculated with the selling price of base instead of cost price okay let me first write what is profit percent what is profit percent profit percent is what selling price minus cost price by cost price into 100 so usually the base is supposed to be the cost price yeah but in this case, while computing, they have told that they have ta taken the base as selling price. So, the profit percent, which is 8 by 100, I am writing it here. The profit percent 8, 8 is equal to, it is selling price minus cost price divided by selling price into 100, it seems, yeah. Because you have taken the selling price as base instead of the cost price, yeah. Now, this is the equation that you have, okay. Profit percent is 8. So, let, let's, let me compute from here, yeah. 8 is equal to selling price what is selling price it is p selling price of x toys is p minus cost price cost price of x toys is px by 25 px by 25 divided by selling price what is selling price it is p into 100 
so this is what we have yeah now it's all about computing okay it's it's just about computing okay we have, we have solved the entire thing okay so how shall we go about it how shall we go about it i'll write this as probably i'll transpose this to this side okay so what do we get we have 8 by 100 is equal to now p gets cancelled because we can take p everywhere yeah we can take p in the numerator common and p in the denominator common so i'm taking p common so that gets cancelled i hope you're understanding p p and p get cancelled yeah okay so i'll not write p in the next step so what happens now we have 1 minus x by 25 so we have 1 minus x by 25 divided by p is gone right so you have only one yeah so this is what we have okay now what is it now that we get here so it is like what 8 by 100 is equal to 25 if you take uh, you know if you take one common see you can compute the way you want i'm just doing uh, it as i get it now yeah so you can write uh, 1 as 25 by 25 right so i'll just write it as 25 minus x by 25 yeah i'm just taking the lcm so what happens now 25 ones 25 fours four ones four twos so you get 2 is equal to 25 minus x so 25 minus x is equal to 2 so you get the x value as 25 minus 2 that is 23 therefore he should have sold 23 see he actually bought 25 but he sold only 23 yeah for the same price therefore effectively he is definitely in profit yeah is this clear to everyone so the, the the formula is supposed to be profit percentage selling price minus cost price minus by cost price into 100 but now they've they've assumed the base to be selling price so 8 is equal to selling price minus cost price or selling price into 100 so now i've just written that value you already know the cost price you already know the selling price i've substituted the values as such so i've transposed this 100 to this side 8 by 100 is equal to and then cancel out the piece yeah so p p p get cancelled so you get instead of p you have 1 minus 1 into x by 25 by 1 yeah because the p is cancelled so this is what we have i'm writing 1 as 25 by 25 so that you can easily add these two so 25 minus x by 25 25 1 25 4 4 1 4 2 if you simplify it further you get the value of x as 23 so therefore he has sold only 23 articles out of 25 articles okay let me explain the last question in this uh, you know lecture I see what water supply has two inlet pipes x and y okay there are two inlet pipes these are inlet pipes x and then there is one more inlet pipe that is y which can fill in 20 hours they can fill because they are inlet pipes they can fill in 20 hours and 30 hours respectively and then there is an outlet pipe okay with discharges yeah which empties the tank yeah it is c and then it can empty 40 hours it can empty the entire tank in 40 hours so we, we know right like when we are solving questions based on you know time and work or pipes and cisterns we always assume the total capacity in this case we'll assume the total capacity as what the lcm of 20 30 and 40 okay you may follow the method that you are comfortable with but i would probably strongly recommend you guys to follow this method because it is devoid of any fractions okay so i'll assume the total capacity of the tank to be what lcm of 20 30 and 40 what is lcm of 20 30 and 40 it is supposed to be 120 so the capacity of the tank is 120 liters therefore See, if the inlet pipe is able to fill uh, 120 liters in 20 hours, so what is its uh, efficiency? As in, uh, yeah, it can fill 6 liters every hour. Yeah, 120 by 20. So if it fills 6 liters every hour for 20 hours, 6 into 20, you get 120. Similarly, what is the efficiency of pipe uh, Y? So 120 liters in 30 hours. So we can fill 120 by 30. That is 4 liters every hour. And then this 120 by 40. So we can empty 3 liters every hour. Is that clear? Yeah, we've written down this. Now, what is it? Now, if the tank is empty initially, okay, and the taps are the taps are open in succession for one hour each. The, the taps are open in succession for one hour each. That is, this will be opened in the first hour, and then and and all the others will be closed. Okay, then this will be opened in the second hour, and only this will be opened in the third hour. Now, in succession again, in the fourth hour, only the first pipe will be opened, and then in the fifth hour, only the pipe Y. And in sixth hour only pi z so on and so forth yeah this cycle keeps repeating and they're asking when does it get filled let's see what happens so in the first hour you know like six liters would have been filled and in second hour plus four so 10 liters would have been filled and then what happens so three liters are empty so what happens by the end of three hours by the end of three hours 
okay so effectively 7 liters would have been filled i hope this is clear in the first hour plus 6 in the second hour plus 4 so together 10 liters would have been filled by the end of 2 hours but again we are opening an outlet pipe yeah so 3 liters are discharged so 10 minus 3 so effectively only 7 liters would have been filled by the end of 3 hours now what happens in every cycle the same thing happens right again what happens in the fourth hour again plus 6 again plus 4 and then again we have minus 3 so again by the end of the next 3 hours again you know effectively 7 liters would have been filled therefore for every 3 hours 7 liters would be filled okay now if you look at it you know the capacity of the tank is 120 liters yeah 120 liters so what shall we do so let's try to take it to the nearest value okay so this cycle keeps repeating how many cycles will, will happen you know how many cycles are there you know like 7 liters and we have 120 so i'll try to take it to the nearest let, let me take it as let's say 15 i'm multiplying this by 15 so that 15 7 so not 5 right so let me take it for 15 cycles okay 15 cycles that is 45 hours yeah i'm multiplying this with 15 okay so that you get what 15 7 so 105 liters would have been filled in how many hours I multiply, we should also multiply this with 15 right because 15 cycles 15 into 3 that is 45 hours okay so now so after that no why so why did we multiply by 15 and all of, all of that because i'm trying to take it to the closest value we could also multiply with 16 but it's always better to take it you know one or two cycles before so that we'll understand the flow yeah so by the end of 45 hours what 105 liters were filled okay now, now what happens now 45 hours are done 1 out 5 liters now in 46th hour you know cycles are done in 46th hour what happens uh, you know the x the x pipe will be open so it so we fill 6 liters yeah so 1 out 5 plus 6 it is 111 liters and i'm just showing the flow okay in 47th hour y will be open and then again 5 more liters 4 more liters are filled so 111 plus 4 is 115 liters okay again in 48th hour what happens 48th hour okay so again 3 liters are emptied so again it comes back to 112 liters okay fine so again now again if we take 49th hour what happens in 49th hour again uh, x will be open so plus 6 so 112 plus 6 is 118 liters okay now what happens in the 50th hour you know that in the 50th hour pipe y will be open it can fill 4 liters in an hour but now the capacity of the tank is only 120 liters right so it has to fill only 2 liters okay 2 more liters but it can fill 4 liters in an hour therefore it can fill 2 liters in half an hour yeah in half an hour so it's not it's like not the entire hour as such only half an hour more so that the, the entire capacity the total capacity of the tank will be filled therefore what is the total duration 49 plus half yeah therefore you get what option c which is 49 and half i hope this is clear see take it to the nearest value plus 7 right so we know that for every 3 hours 7 liters will be filled so let's try to take it to 120 okay so how to get 120 we can probably we can also multiply with 16 but not with 17 okay multiply with 16 you get 16 7 so 112 yeah you get by the end of 48 hours 112 liters will be filled but just to make you understand i'm trying to take one step lesser yeah therefore i've just taken 15 uh, cycles so in 15 cycles what happens uh, 105 liters will be filled in 45 hours so I've just shown 46, 47, 48. By the end of 40th hour, 112 liters are filled. And in 49th hour, it's a cycle, right? So again, X will be open. So 6 liters will be filled. So 112 plus 6 is 118. Now we have only 2 more liters to be filled. Yeah, we know that pipe Y will be open and it can fill 4 liters in an hour. But we are supposed to fill only 2 more liters. Only 2 more liters. Therefore, it will be just open by for half an hour. So after 49, we are opening only for half an hour. So that you get the total capacity 120 to be filled therefore it is 49 plus half which is 49 and half i hope this is clear thank you